guys, I am here with Raleigh. She is a golden retriever and her pet parents want her to be trimmed as short as possible. So let's see, how low can we go? As I prepare to start her, I am using a groomer's harness. We're gonna get the groomer's harness on her before we take her to the tub. And then we'll wash her in it, dry her in it, and trim her in it. When I use the groomer's harness for a big dog, I attach the extenders so that it will fit a much larger dog. So we just take the extenders and we snap them right into place. And then we judge about how big her rib cage will be and slide the chest piece down. We'll leave this opening for the neck. Come on, Riley. Let's go. Wait. Once you get the harness all snapped into place, it gives you a nice walking handle to move them from the tub to the table and so forth. So now I'm just going to walk her straight into the walk-in tub. It's got stairs. Come on, Riley. Up, up, up. Good girl. That's a very good girl. To wash Rally, we're going to use a de-shedding shampoo and conditioner, and we're going to use a nice little scrubby brush to work it all into her coat. A brush like this works real good. Before I get started, I'm going to plug her ears with cotton. That's a good girl. She's a very sweet dog. Very well behaved, aren't you? Yes, you are. I'm gonna start with just washing her face. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. So now using the power sprayer with the Davis Pet Pro Washer, Pro Pet Washer 7.0. I'm going to use a de-shedding shampoo over here. works the shampoo right on down to the skin, loosening up all that undercoat.
taking my scrubby brush with some de shedding shampoo on it and we're just working this right into the coat loosening up all the undercoat we can in the tub can see it's really starting to loosen up. It's a good girl. It's a good boy. She feels good, huh? Just getting more and more shedding hair out. Let's see if we can get her back in here. Come on, big girl. You're fine. Scooch over here. One way to reach the tail. If you enjoy watching dog grooming, check out our live streams. I live stream about 60 dogs a week. So check it out. Typically I'm on all day, every day, except for holidays and Sundays. Let's see here. It's really starting to work now. I want her nice and clean and fresh smelling. I love golden retrievers. They're such good dogs. So sweet. They've got very sensitive skin, so it's important to rinse them really, really good. It's a flat coated breed, so I work real hard to keep the coat lying flat.
So next we're using the uh, dish egg conditioner. Powering it on. Now, using the same system as I did with the shampoo, I'm putting D-Shed conditioner into my scrubby brush. We're just going to start working it through the coat. Just bringing up more and more shedding hair. Getting all of this out. Come on, good girl. Sometimes I have to get in between the camera and the dog. You can't really see too good. Huh. So I wanna reach her back end. She's quite heavy to turn around. So let me see if I can get her to move it. Come on, can we turn? Come on. Come on. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. Turn. There we go. Good girl. Now I can reach the back end. Keep her here. Good girl. You can just see the coat coming up. Stay. 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 Doesn't that feel nice? Yes, it feels so good. All right. I'm going to power rinse her and then rinse her with the regular sprayer. Because I want to get right down to the skin. The short back and forth motion helps to loosen up hair and bring it up and out.
Ja. Now we're gonna finish her off with this sprayer with a nice gentle shower rinse and get the rest of the shampoo and, or the rest of the conditioner off of her. Isn't she sweet? Look at that face. Look at that face, he's so encourage a flat coat, I blow dry these dogs straight from the tub and I never use a cage dryer or a fan. That'll get me a nice flat coat and a really pretty blow dry. It makes the coat so much easier to work with when you do it that way. All right, let's see if we can get her to turn around again. Good girl, Stan. Good dog.
You wouldn't believe how much golden retriever hair is in this tub. Shampoo and conditioner really did their job. And the scrubby brush, of course. It's gonna smell so pretty. ear wash in her ears. how much she came up with that second round. Really brought it up. Shake again. Shake it out. Shake it, baby. Shake it. Shake it out. Shake, shake. So I normally don't clean out abnormal ears like this, but I don't want it draining all over a clean dog when I'm blow drying her either. There's just so much that it would just dribble down her coat and make her look dirty. I don't want that. So I'll never get it all out, but I want to get enough out to wear if she shakes her head, it's not going to end up all over her hair. Shake. Good girl. And we're getting there. Almost. It's coming out cleaner now. Now it's starting to come out clean. It took these many cotton pads to get all that out of her ears. One ear. That's just one. Now let's see how the other one looks. That one looks good. This one is normal. So one cotton pad on that side and about 10 on this side. We're pretty good now. So next I'm going to plug her ears before I start drying her as well as wrapping her head. And the dry cotton pads will soak up any more that's in the ears and keep her from hearing the dryer so much because goldens are kind of sensitive to sound. So now 
here I'm towel drying her and asking her to come on out of the tub. I use non-slip matting on the stairs and going out away from the stairs so that she doesn't slip. We're gonna keep her right on the same harness and walk her out on the harness. And that makes life really easy. These stairs tend to move under them, so I put my foot on them to keep them stable. Just ask her on down. Here we go. Good girl. And now she's on the carpet as it comes out. And that's going to absorb up anything that's on the floor as a towel dryer.
we go. Good care. It's beautiful. All right, let's get your nails trimmed. That's a good job. The instructions on Rally, when I first started grooming her, this is, a, I think, her third visit with me, is to take her as short as you can possibly go. For me, I like to keep a nice flat back on these dogs. I do not like to clip her in the hard hair that you see, the dark red hair, but I don't mind clipping the soft undercarriage, the pants, the tail, the chest, the feathers on the back of the front legs. Uh, the edges of the ears and around the feet. So I get her as short as I can, still keeping a nice flat coat. So uh, to bring all this down, we do that with de-shedding tools and carding tools. So that's what I'm gonna start by doing is carding out some of this undercoat. We've gotten most of it out in the bath. I'm going to use an Andis undercoat right the regular teeth and take this through the coat. And get out as much of the shedding undercoat as I can. And this will bring the coat down and lie it flat and take out a lot of hair without shaving her. And naturally, if a pet parent prefers to have their dog shaved, that is something that they can have done at another salon. It's not something that I offer. And the pet parent has been happy with the um, length that I've left the dog. I take her nice and tight, but still keep her looking nice. So they've been very happy with the services. And sometimes when pet parents say, take them as short as you can, they don't always mean shaved. And they want the groomer to do what's best for the dog, for its beauty, and for its coat type. And that's basically what I try to do is um, keep coats as nice as I possibly can.
by the time I end up getting all this shut-in coat out of here, this coat is going to be much shorter and flatter anyway. Because I've already gotten a ton out in the tub and I'm getting a ton more out now. I comb with the lay of the coat. And I continue this process until I feel no more resistance in the tool. I come down the back of the tail. And basically I do this everywhere where you see this thick red hair, the coarse hair that lies nice and flat. This tool works really, really good for this. And you can use this even if you're keeping your golden in a full coat because it's gonna help this back lay nice and flat with no flips, no soft hair pushing through the dark hair. Keeps it looking really, really nice. And you can do this every time you wash your dog. And you can do it, you know, like once a week if you want in between baths, just to keep the coat line flat. You don't want to overdo it. And if there's no resistance in the tool as you're pushing through, as I'm starting to get no resistance now, that's when you quit. You only use it when you're feeling resistance. And the reason for that is you will scrape the skin if you continue when you should. Take this off, she should behave. I'll put it back on if she needs it. Good girl. Stand. Good girl. So now we're going to do this side. Again, only go with the lay of the coat, meaning the direction that the coat grows naturally. They grow thicker hair in the shoulders and in the haunches. And you want to kind of hold the skin taut, keep it from rolling around as you go. You can do it by grabbing the front of the leg here or rolling the skin off the back to the side whatever it takes to kind of keep it taut. I feel that using this method of taking a dog short helps the skin to stay healthier. A lot of times you'll see golden retrievers with skin allergies and hot spots and that sort of thing. If you keep all these follicles cleared out, it helps the skin to stay healthy. If you just shave it, you're encouraging a prolific undercoat growth so the dog ends up lighter colored, uh, the hair is curlier and softer and more deeply rooted. It tends to interrupt the natural shedding process and shedding is a good thing. Shedding's not a bad thing, but you want the coat to shed because that's a natural process for this coat and skin type. When you interrupt that, I think they have more problems. Now you see this coat's really lying flat. And I've gotten all this out with this process. So we're gonna, that's with the wider tooth knife. Now we're gonna move to the finer tooth knife. 
because we've gotten all this bulk out of the way. It's not a knife. I shouldn't say that. I usually use stripping knives. This is an undercoat rake. So now I'm going to start using this one and it's going to get out even finer hair. Help the coat to lie even, layer, lie even flatter. I'm doing this dog at the end of the day as a favor for the client. I've already put in a 12 hour day today. So if I seem a little frazzled, that might be why. <laughs> I'm gonna use this fine one on top of her head a little bit. Get out some of the shedding hair up here. Lie it down. use this one down the front of the legs get some of this soft hair out of here was an emergency groom of sorts. Pet parents going out of town and the dog sitter wanted her clean. <laughs> and then she realized she never made her grooming appointment. She's like, oh no, help. I'm like, all right, bring her in. So now I'm gonna do the pads of the feet. Get those cleared out. For that, I am using a 30 blade. It's okay. Yeah, just fine. Good girl, stay. Yeah. With golden retrievers, you don't want the tail dropping past the hock. So I measure the tail right to the hock. Using my 40 blade, I'm going to trim it off right there. This also works real good getting this soft fluffy stuff off the front of the legs. That stuff's always so hard to get off and this just takes it right out. That's just loose hair ready to come out, it needs to come out. So you can just take that right on down and also take this for that fluffy stuff on the shoulders right here. Set those legs up under them nice. Just get all of that out of there. All this fluffy stuff on the lower leg here. Use that there. It gets all that. Gets it right off of there. These little light fuzzies here. 
and use it there. Any of the little light colored fuzzies that need to come off in the shorter haired areas. You can even use it on the top of the head for the fuzzies here. It's gonna get all that out and help lay that head down nicely. You can use it on the cheeks. Get all the fuzzies off of there and lay that coat down. Once all that's done, I'm gonna scissor her feet. I like to make the feet look nice and upright. I don't comb the hair between the toes. I just keep the foot on the ground and kind of comb the hair in a natural position with the foot on the ground, around the foot. Basically, I want it to look straight up and down here, and I don't like pull that hair between the toes and scissor it off. I keep it where it sits naturally without all the toes sticking out in between. The hocks I neaten up. Sometimes I see people pull all the hair up between the toes. And that's not my favorite way to do it. Now we're gonna do these front feet.
All right, to trim her underside as short as I can possibly go, I'm going to clipper it. That's going to tighten up the entire thing. I'm going to use a three blade. Turn. Turn. This way. Goldens are like dead weight when you go to move them. So this entire light colored underside, we're gonna take a three blade and clip her against the grain all the way up to the armpits. I'm gonna come inside the back legs. This is soft coat. I don't mind trimming soft coat. Now I'm using my blending shears. I'm gonna round the soft coat on the sides up from that clippered line to round in all this soft coat right here into the hard coat. Setting my underline that way saves me a ton of time on getting that whole line nice and even and nice and short. legs back around, getting them nice and short. I am using Densetsu blenders. Switch to a finer blender just to blend this line in for me. Did not come out with the effect that I wanted there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So now I'm going to take this entire soft area here and shorten the whole thing up. Okay.
big hair short under the ears. It's okay, baby. Using 44 tooth blending shears, I'm rounding the underside up into the harder hair. Blending it as I go. Taking this underline all the way up. You're okay, honey. Taking these legs and just tightening them right up. Taking the pants very short and flat. I'm going to set the tail in a flag shape. You can sit down if you want to. It's okay. Want to sit? Want to sit? No, not get down. Just sit. You tired, girl? Are you tired? You want to sit? You can sit. Yes, you can. You can sit. Oh, yeah, you good girl. Good girl. No, we're not finished. We're not finished. She thinks we're finished. No, we're not finished. Stay. Stay. Good girl. And she's like, okay, we're finished. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> you think you're smart, don't you? Almost. all the feathering right off the front legs. Again, I'm taking her as short as I personally am comfortable doing. So dogs with hair, I don't mind taking all the way down if a client wants them to. But this is a dog with fur, and it's different. Dogs with fur, I try to keep as much of the hard coat all the way in through the shoulders and the back intact. I don't like to cut off any of that if I can help it. Now, if the coat has already been shaved and the coat has been altered so that it grows differently then i'll do something different but if the coat is a nice natural correct coat 
for its breed, I'm going to try to keep it intact. Because once it's damaged, you know, sometimes it's hard to get it to come back right. Ears. We're just taking all this fuzz off, bringing them up to the ear pinna. off the table and take a look at her and see how it's coming along. I need to do the other ear. I want to comb her all out, see how she looks. all this hair under the ear. Okay. So I'm continuing around the dog, trimming all the light, fluffy, soft hair as short as possible. Blending it into the harder hair. So there's quite a bit of controversy surrounding trimming double-coated dogs even in the dog grooming community. What do you think? Do you think it's better to keep the coat intact and um, not go too short? Or do you think that it's okay to shave the dog down? Let me know in the comments below what your opinion is. And please add to that if you're a professional because this is a interesting subject that has been going around the grooming community for a while. And if you think it's okay to shave them, let me know why. And likewise, if you don't think they should be shaved, I'd love to hear your opinions on that.
but regardless, each salon has their own standards of operation and their own guidelines that they adhere to. So in my salon, as much as I can possibly get away with, this is what I prefer to do. If a client wants a double coated dog really short, Tired. It's okay. Good night. It's a good girl. It's just fine. Tired like what, huh? I'm big on letting dogs have freedom of movement. If they want to sit, they can sit. If they want to lay down, they can lay down. If they need a nap, if I have time, I'll let them have a nap. But for the most part, I just work on whatever they present to me at the moment, if possible. It's not always possible. I think she is ready for a nap. So while she's doing this, we can just go over some of these areas that need the stone some more. Get my shedding hair out. just as long as she could. But she was getting tired. Yeah. Oh, she's a good girl. Oh, she's a good girl, yes. 
Oh, 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 she's a good girl. Such a good puppy. All right, guys, that's it for Miss Raleigh here. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. Don't forget to check out our live streams. We live stream about 60 dogs a week, so check us out, and we will see you next time. Bye.